Hello, it's Ernesto. I'm a film composer and I make these videos to document my career as one. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, consider subscribing. Today we're going to be looking at how I scored a TV show with only free sounds. So I use the stock sounds that come with Logic. I use Spitfire Labs instruments and I used uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover series. It's 50 bucks. But if you're like me, you can fill out the survey and get it for free two weeks later. If you don't want to pay for it, that's what I did. Okay, so specifically, I'll be breaking down how I did a specific scene from the episode, only because it's the longest one, and I use all three of the libraries that I just mentioned exclusively. So, let's get into it. So, firstly, here are the instruments that I used. Uh, almost everything in the top half of the session are stock sounds, a little brass here, a um, bunch of percussion, and some keys. Now this soft piano track comes from Spitfire Labs series. It's one of my favorite sounds, honestly. It's uh, a piano that I reach for over and over again. Now I know they also have their new Originals series. They've got the cinematic soft piano. They've got the felt piano and they have that firewood piano as well. I haven't looked into those yet, but hey, if you wanna see a video of me uh, going over those sounds, then let me know with a like on this video. They're only like 30 bucks each, so uh, I might consider it. Not liking the video. I mean, I mean buying the, the pianos. Liking the video is free. So the rest of the strings are here. Well, these belong to the labs. They're the ensemble strings. I use them as pizzicato. Please ignore the naming. I, I know towards the end of this, I got really disorganized. Uh, it was a quick project, so I didn't take too much time to uh, make everything look pretty, but be more organized than me. Don't be me. Okay, so I, I use the uh, lab strings for these pizzicatos. This is one of the built-in strings that Logic has, the studio strings. Um, and the rest of these belong to the BBC SO Discovery series. So tremolos and I think longs. These are longs. Please ignore the trem again. Don't be me. I also have these two other tracks down here. And this is a bass sound for a big moment. And this is a turntable scratch sound that the director wanted only because of what this is. So speaking of which, a little context first. This show is a parody of a novella, so it's not taking itself very seriously. And I think the music represents that in many ways, because as you'll see in this cue, it's very on the nose for what it's supposed to be, but that's kind of the point because it's a comedy. It's not supposed to be super serious. Um, in fact, I think in comedy, the more serious the music is, the funnier the comedy is. So, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and play you the track.
Okay, so as you can see, it's fairly simple orchestration. So now I shall start to break it down. Firstly, we start off here with the pizzicato ensemble strings. Again, that's from Labs. The Steinway Grand Piano, which is from Logic, and the orchestral kit playing like a, a shaker sound, again from Logic. So they're playing that rhythm over and over again, that ostinato continues. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, also, in this episode, there is a murder, and the characters are all trying to figure out who did it. And in this scene in particular, the protagonist figures it all out and is putting all the pieces together and is telling the story of how the murder happened. So, spoilers? Now, what the director told me was that he wanted a Mission Impossible style kind of spy espionage feel to it. So that's what I tried to do. Now, in the piano here, it's playing in a, in a low octave, only because it's very, very uh, full of harmonics. So it's just one note in the, in, in the bass register, and then the pizzicato strings are playing in octaves. So presumably uh, basses and cellos would be doing that. In the orchestral kit, the shaker is the only thing we have. Uh, there is dialogue while all this is happening, so it's fairly um, muted. Okay, so you'll also notice that I have markers. So this Q start marker I put at the beginning of every Q on measure five. That's just out of habit. I usually have a Q end marker that's red at the end of the marker, which used to be here, but uh, there needed to be music further along, so I got rid of it and I never, never added it back. So. Uh, that's supposed to be there. Here is when our killer enters the frame, Hannah. So right when that happens, a harp, one of Logic's uh, sounds, comes in. A vibe, a glock, and a trem cello, which is from the BBC SO. So that ostinato continues that we've been having, and then we have something else come in. Firstly, there's the marimba. Now, the marimba is there. I think it blends really well with pizzicato strings. And in fact, that's what I did. I copied and pasted this part down here. That's why this is called marimba, even though it's uh, pizzicato strings. Again, don't be me. And then I added this drummer track. Now, drummer inside of Logic is a way to generate percussion parts uh, really easily that you can customize pretty, pretty well. It's like having a real percussionist. So in this case, I used Isabella to play the Latin percussion. I wanted bongo. I think there are bongo and conga sounds. Yes, there are bongo and conga sounds in this uh, particular track. And uh, triangle. I wanted a triangle in there only because of the sneaky qualities that I think this scene needed for when Hannah is walking around trying not to be seen in order to uh, do her murder. Now, I do that for a few reasons. Firstly, Hannah enters the frame here, right? That's that's where we see her her, her come, into, come into the frame. And we don't see her again past this point, and this is when the orchestration thickens up a little bit. So we're, we're getting some more momentum here after we don't hear her. So the protagonist continues to explain how it happened, and we don't see Hannah come in again until here. This is where I put in a little timpani sound. So the timpani is there to be kind of the uh, foreboding element as we witness Hannah about to poison the drink, which is how the murder happens. So when we see her again, that's when the timpani comes in. Now, here in the scene, the, the feel kind of changes a bit. So. We are now about to physically see her poison the drink. And so the orchestration changes. A lot of the ostinatos uh, disappear. The, the marimba drops out, the shaker drops out, the congas, that um, bass, that bass ostinato that was, that was happening in the piano and in the pizzicato strings. So right here, the uh, field changes. I have a chalice comes in. I think this is a snare drum, yes, this is a snare drum that takes over for the uh, shaker, only because it's the same rhythm. Mm -hmm. 
It's not the greatest snare drum sound out there. But it's the same rhythm, but I wanted the uh, timbre change because now we feel like it's like it's getting a little bit more serious. So the shaker feels more harmless. It's it's giving us a forward momentum with the with the uh, rhythm. But when the snare drum comes in, it sounds like something's really gonna happen now. Speaking of that kind of tension that I wanted, I now introduce tremolo strings. Now, the way they're laid out here, I believe that this is second violins, violas, the celli, basses, and then the first violins come in uh, after, after these do. There's a real body for when a, a, a bass does a tremolo, it's really big and very scary. And so this slowly uh, builds and builds on a, I think it's an augmented chord. No, it's a diminished chord that this is built on. And then I also have Celeste in octaves here that kind of adds a little, a little sparkle, but it's mostly for the mischief that we're witnessing here. Now, again, following the same kind of motif as, as before, once we see Hannah poison the drink and I have a marker for it, the timpani comes back in to play its foreboding theme. Now, once the deed is done, all of those instruments uh, drop out. And we have like a little timpani solo. I don't know why I was being so timpani heavy on this cue. It just felt like the right thing to do. It might have been I didn't know what to do, but that's... That happens sometimes, just, you know, just trust yourself. So right after that, I have a harp glissando, which I played on the keyboard and then did a transpose quantize to um, a harmonic minor key. I think this is in G minor. Yes, it would have been in uh, G harmonic minor. Just did that really quickly for a harp glissando. And then that leads into a large string moment here, right as we see Hannah, our killer, walk away from, from the deed, like she just got away with it, which in this case, she did. And our last moment here comes in with brass. These are not trumpets, actually. These are trombones. So these trombones and French horns, these are all stock uh, Logic sounds. These trombones are from the studio horns that Logic has. And at that moment, there's also a deep sub bass sound that happens. In the context of this scene, this is a moment that I, that I really, really like and I think uh, came out really well. Now, after that, we come back to the present day in the scene, after uh, the protagonist tells the story of how the murder happened. And we have a relatively sad moment because in the show, Hannah poisoned the drink, but someone else gave her the drink without knowing it was poisoned. So he's reflecting on how badly he feels for having given her the drink. So for this moment, uh, originally this wasn't here. The director requested that there be music during this moment and then a record scratch, like it's being interrupted at the end of the scene once they realize that Hannah, the accused, has just disappeared. Now this is when we use the Lab's soft piano sound, which I love so much uh, because I think it's just got that, that nice, uh, quality and character to it that I just, I don't know, I like it a lot. I should really check out those originals pianos. Leave a like on the video if you want to see that video. So there's only that instrument playing. I think there's a, a bunch of reverb on it. And there's also a cello, a single cello line playing from the BBC Discover series. What I like about the BBC sound that they have built in, even in just the Discover version of the of the library is that it feels so it feels so full and the cello here is very resonant so it can really it can really carry the scene along with the piano really well so that continues until we have our record scratch that was just a i you can look in apple loops in logic and you'll find that record uh, scratch sound i just looked for it there and it was it was it was right there and uh it's perfect for 
this context. So there you go. Uh, it's not anything too crazy or too insane. It's just using my knowledge of orchestration to lift up the quality of my music, even if I am using free sounds, which I think there's a lot to learn from here. I've been only using free sounds to write everything that I've been doing up to this point, and people keep asking me to uh, do music for their short films. I think it's more important to learn how the instruments work and how they work together than how expensive that instrument was to buy. Now, could I elevate my sound to another level if I paid for sample libraries and used those instruments instead? Yes, certainly. But what I'm saying is that it shouldn't stop you from making music or getting better at what it is you do with what you have. So if that's you and you know who you are, then quit the excuses and just write music. You might be surprised with what you can actually do. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end it right there. And until next time, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Ernesto Composer. You can visit my website at ernestocomposer.com. Thanks so very much for watching and as always, take care.